watch here on Gay Thrones Talk. Here, this is season eight, episode six, the series finale. I'm so verklempt I talked over the opening logo there. I don't care. What a show we have to break down. What a series we have to talk about later on in the show. But a lot happened uh, tonight. A lot that I think we're mixed on here on the panel. I'm seeing already social media. Some people thought it was a great episode. Some people thought it was the second to worst series finale they've ever seen. A lot of interesting comments rolling through here. So we're going to break it all down. But hey, who knew it? The kid in the wheelchair. He's the king. All right, we're going to move on <laughs> and talk about all of this and break it all down i'm your host john roca joined as always finally the gang's all back together like the starks all back together here ashley robinson you're back from your travels how are you i am i'm good i'm so happy that we can come back together to rage about the fact that they've told us these were dragons for 10 years they're actually wyverns they only have two legs <laughs> Ooh, nice point very Thank good you. point and Haley back from her travels all over the world in norway how yeah. are you great yeah? thank you um Maybe overselling it. I don't know. I'm very conflicted. I don't know how yeah. I feel yet. So let's talk it through. Let's I have like a little that. therapy session. I got a feeling it's going to be a therapy yeah. session. And of course, well, one half of the hosts of What the Throne podcast over there, Dennis saying, how are you? I'm doing good. I'm sure everyone on the internet is going to be super civil in their discussion <laughs> about this episode. They'll be fine. Don't worry about it. I'm already looking at the chat. The chat is lively as you hell. You can at Think Hero with all of your hot takes. <laughs> thank, you to the, thank you to the almost 3,000 of you who are already watching us live. Let's break this thing down. Let's take it step by step. Uh, as we started out here, it was the carnage right after Danny had set everything up. You have Tyrion walking through the carnage, seeing everything that's uh, uh, seeing the burnt body, seeing we see we get a call back to that young mother and child mm -hmm. with the with the the toy, everything there. Jon Snow, we see walking behind him with uh, Davos or Davos as well, surveying all the carnage here uh, and really consuming this. Tyrion breaks off from them to go and try to have his own journey to find Cersei and Jaime, which he does. Uh, I'll go to you, Dennis, first. Uh, how was this start for you picking up? right after the carnage of Danny's decision in the Bells. Uh, this part I loved. I mm -hmm. loved the first half of this episode because mm -hmm. it was a proper aftermath. They get to see the destruction that Daenerys caused and it's not just like, oh, it's just like CG, whatever, a, a dragon blowing fire, really cool, buildings falling and whatnot. They actually see like Tyrion walking down the street and people like, dead burnt bodies that one guy that was like i don't know if he was fully naked or whatever just like mm -hmm. burnt uh walking along and just seeing that destruction i think was a good insight into how those characters Jon snow yeah. Tyrion, and davos and everyone else there felt and how mm -hmm. they're like the conflict and tension that's rising for them and and him going to see cersei and jamie like remember he doesn't know if they, they escaped or not he wants to see yeah if they did or not yeah. Like he wants to check out. He goes down there, and once he sees all those bricks, he knows. Yeah, he knows. He's a, he sees that golden. I actually thought that was a, a touching moment. Him crying and lifting mm -hmm. the bricks and seeing them together. Yeah, you know, it's it's his. As much as you know, he had so much like his sister hated him so much. I don't think mm. he ever hated his sister. He knew he his sister was a hateful person. Right, but he says didn't later. have that hate for her that mm -hmm. that she did. Mm -hmm. And so, even though obviously Jamie he loved he still had a piece of him that, that loved her and was sad to see her go. Yeah, certainly there was a breakdown there in that. Uh, thank you, Adam Smith, for correcting me. I guess I was so messed up, I was looking at the wrong camera. But you see that happen as well. <laughs> then we see John and Grey Worm have a little bit of an interaction there when John goes off with Davos. Uh, he wants to stop uh, Grey Worm from killing those prisoners, kind of, uh, putting Danny's agenda fully in motion for anyone who's still alive. Um, and John tries to stop Grey Worm. The Unsullied pull their swords out, and it's almost a Mexican standoff here, for lack of a better term, in that moment. Davos, of course, always trying to calm situations down, does it, and then John goes off to try and talk to Danny. Does Davos succeed, though? He doesn't always <laughs> succeed, that's for sure, because uh, we do see those throats cut. Yeah. Now, this is an interesting point, because to me, if I can give my two cents at this moment, in this moment, I am all, uh, uh, I'm in this. I'm like, this is a war. This is a battle. This is the decision. To the victor, go the spoils. If the victor wants to kill every soldier so that that's, those soldiers never rise up again, 
Okay, that can be done. It has been done. We have done it before in history and war. So at this point, I wasn't, I was still on the thing that Danny's not a bad person. Danny's not crazy. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking they're pulling out this, uh, they're doing this military decision, but John is clearly conf conflicted. This is certainly the theme they wanted us feeling as we were going along, Ashley. What'd you think? Yeah, I agree. I th have thought Danny was crazy for many seasons now. Mm -hmm. So for me, this wasn't necessarily the turning point that I think it was meant to be um, for a lot of other people watching. But I like that we took this beat because we don't often take the time to deal with things of moral quandary in this yeah, season yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we have to move so fast I like that we address the complicated nature of war even as it trickles down to something like this what do we do with the Lannister army mm -hmm. um, and it does set up the conflict between John and Grey Worm um, because of spoilers the death that comes at 43 minutes uh, but that, <laughs> yeah. that really if carries spoiled, through the rest of the episode yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly well and then we see Arya walking amongst the ruins as well uh, and uh, her still recovering from what she saw no white horse to be seen at this point uh, and then she walks around this uh, just this opening we see all these horses, the Dothraki going insane, very celebratory uh, post-war victory party, I guess. Probably a lot of beer being served, maybe. Uh, and then <laughs> John walks through them, parts the sea, in essence, and goes up to that castle. And apparently, just like everything in Game of Thrones, people can move way quicker than John does. And the Grey Worm's already at the top. <laughs> yeah. Tyrion is up there uh, eventually. Uh, but we see John start to walk up and then... Behind, and then we see Danny come into full view with those. Oh, and we see Drogon, and then we see Danny come into full view with those dragon wins. Maybe my favorite visual of the entire series. There's a lot of great shots in this episode. Right, right. Yeah. So, what do you think about all of this here, Haley, as we go into from Tyrion to Grey Worm to John walking up uh, the castle steps? What's your overall feeling here? Overall feeling. I don't, so like I wasn't here last week. I had a very, I think, different mm. reaction mm. than you guys. I was very upset by last week's episode, okay. and it to me was. You know, it's just too rushed. I ha I'm mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. Ashley. I've thought that she's a dangerous ruler and kind of a crazy leader for a long time. So I always expected it to go this way, but it went way too fast. It didn't play for me. Yeah. So watching all of them walk through it, I was still going through those same mm -hmm. emotions, mm -hmm. still processing uh, who this queen is now and how fast she became that. And right. I, you know, like I said, I always thought she was not a very good ruler. So it, the foreshadowing was there. It was just like if a chart's going up and then it's like the invention of technology over the last yeah. 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> like, and you kind of called that when we were doing our earlier podcasts and predictions about this season that there was going to be really no time to develop any yeah. of this stuff as mm. it was happening. Yeah, so that walk is still me processing. And, you know, I... Uh, I think I, I had hoped at that moment that Arya walking up would mean more than that. I didn't mm. want her to go after Danny personally because I actually like her arc this season and that she's been turning away from her vengeance mm -hmm. angel type persona and away from her list. But it just seems strange to me that they paralleled them in a way that ultimately didn't lead to anything. Yeah. Uh, but I will say... How did all of those Unsullied come back? Yeah. Like, <laughs> we were discussing that last episode. Yeah. There's so many, many Unsullied yeah. now. They was hiding. They, they, yeah. 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 they explained that, but you know, not very well. Yeah. In what, uh, was it last episode or the episode before where they're like, the oh, only, before, half, yeah. only half of our Dothraki are gone. Only yeah. half of our Unsullied gone. They were like, look, you couldn't see the Battle of Winterfell anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't yeah. know where yeah. anyone was. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in the episode, it looked like they were yeah. just decimated yeah. and yeah. we'd have like a few hundred of each. And it, yeah. it seemed like they're like, oh, only half were. Well, well, he he the, says, doesn't he say thousands? Doesn't Grey Worm say that there's thousands of Unsullied? Yeah. yeah. So. Well, even in the post-episode interview for the Battle of Winterfell episode, he was like, you're essentially seeing the end of the Dothraki. Mm -hmm. But we weren't. So I'm yeah. just a little confused by the logistics. Sort of like Grey Worm <laughs> right. getting to the top of yeah, the stairs. Yeah, how did he get to the top of the stairs? <laughs> John just left we him. We don't have time for, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Because he had to kill people. Yeah. So he was even yeah. more delayed than John just right. simply there walking like through. There were six more throats to slit in yeah. that line. Yeah, man, he went had up a lot the back. to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there must be like a secret entrance for Grey Worm <laughs> to get to where he's going. A uh, lot of... Uh, uh, chat is reflecting the same thing. A lot of anger, a lot of positive comments. So uh, it's an interesting situation here. Uh, Breaking Bad had a better ending, some people say. Worst ending ever. Uh, someone said, uh, how come uh, uh, Arya didn't use her face powers? Mm. All of oh, that yeah. wasn't used. Like, what why didn't she do that? For? Yeah, what, what was the whole setup for all of that? Also, it's easy to compare it to Breaking Bad because Breaking Bad ended 
years ago. We're all coming to this really, mm. really fresh. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people not to label it as the worst, yeah. even if you yeah. didn't like it, because we all know Quantum Leap was the worst finale, okay? <laughs> oh, wow, there's a reference. Dexter for wants to talk to there. you about that. I, I don't know, the Seinfeld uh, finale. Yeah. That was pretty bad. Well, because yeah. it was just, all it was was a best up, right? Yeah. Just, like, I think this back. has a Sopranos vibe to it. I think people will be as split with this as mm -hmm. they were on the Sopranos one. Uh, Danny, I love the way Danny came out. I, I, it was supporting my point of view on Danny. As a military <laughs> leader, making her decisions, she wants to build the world, and she says, she has the conversation. It, it, well, we'll get to that conversation. I don't want to jump the gun yet. First, she comes out and says to everyone in that fantastic black outfit, my yeah. God, I haven't felt that great about a black outfit since Black mm -hmm. Panther's outfit when he came out as a king. So seeing her walk out like that with all her power and her strength fully embraced now and telling the Rocky and the Unsullied, thanking them both for what they helped her do. And then she's still talking about breaking the wheel and she wants to break the wheel all over the world. And that is to me, is a positive. She wants to liberate men, women, and children. Yes, she's saying that as the carnage is still flesh, fresh in front of her, but she still has this intention to do this. Then Tyrion walks up, takes his hand thing off, set, trying to kind of judges her because she says, you committed treason, you let your brother go. And she says, yeah, I let my brother go, but you killed innocents. So Dennis, this seems... I don't know. This seems weird for Tyri to have the high ground in this situation. But why, they gave it to not? him. Why not? Why not? I mean, uh, he, because he lists all the things he did when he's there in the jail cell just a little bit later. He, no one is he, without sin in this situation. No, of course. He never but, massacred a city. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I his mean, decisions people, led to her massacring a city. Well, his decision, a lot of his poor decisions was his loyalty and his belief. Like he mentions in that conversation with Jon Snow right. in Daenerys. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that has led to this point. I mean, he, yes, he has done some bad things, but yeah. he has never done anything like Daenerys has. And okay. I, I actually like this, this whole uh, you know, front part with, with Tyrion and Jon and Daenerys just because you're seeing Jon Snow, like he's conflicted yes. on what mm -hmm. to do because it is, and I think Tyrion at the very end before Jon leaves plays the, the family card. Mm -hmm. And that's the card that I think eventually turns Jon and has him kill Daenerys because yeah. because I think before that I think he still was gonna go with her and and, and yeah. this whole liberating and the breaking the wheel she is she is the wheel what? what was she talking about I disagree thoroughly oh really yeah. maybe maybe that's thoroughly. why you were more upset when, when, when yeah. she she died because yeah. no way she is the wheel she's everything that she's been talking about how she's going to destroy and she she she's become that okay. Agree. And I will yeah. say before we leave behind the, the yeah. Tyrion scene, yeah. I don't know if we're going to talk about that more. I did yeah. like that his, his winning advice was to care for your family because that's the most Lannister advice you can give is <laughs> yeah. put your family before everything. But it's also yeah. the most stark. Yeah, and true. And they're the two houses that from the beginning are kind of set up to be at odds with each other, but they operate very similarly. Mm. And I know toward the end, John has feelings about how the Starks resolve the situation, yeah. which could be read as a very Lannister way to go about things. Mm. And uh, we'll there's to. a lot of really interesting parallels mm. between houses that you used to be enemies or have traditionally been enemies. Even you were talking about Danny's black outfit yeah. with the exception of when she's in Winterfell, pre battle of Winterfell, she's always dressed dark this season. It's a very like Luke Skywalker and return of the Jedi. Um, a way to show us that she's sort of embracing her darkness But now. I don't know a leader that does not believe that they know the right way to do things. All leaders feel this way. America has bombed Japan thinking we were in the right. America has held slaves. America has destroyed Native Americans, men, women, and children because we thought we were right and yet we still like our country. So to me, what Danny did, yes, it was terrible, but Danny was trying to build a better world. She didn't get a chance to do it because Johnny Boy got a whisper of the snake in his ear and killed her. And so to me, that bothers me on so many levels. And I may be the only person on my own island over there in Iron Island believing this to be the truth. But this is how I felt about it. But in this moment, she names Grey Worm Commander of Forces. She says she wants to liberate their does. Um, then John and Danny, John and Arya have this exchange, uh, 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 Haley, and she says, uh, John says she's everyone's queen now. And Arya kind of, I think, doing a little foreshadowing says, tell that to Sansa, you know, of what mm -hmm. we're going to see way later on here. Um, but then John and Tyrion have their conversation when they're in the prison, when he's in the jail cell because Danny puts him in prison and they talk about, you know, John's death, make a little joke about it. John thinks the war's over and Tyr here's where Tyrion starts the convincing of John mm -hmm. to do his bidding in essence and say, and he says, do you listen to her, how she spoke. She doesn't think she's, does she sound like she's done fighting? So you look at the scene, uh, 
thoughts. That's what I would say. Well, I mean, obviously we're on very different yeah. sides yeah. here. Um, yeah. I mean, all those things you just listed from American history are things that we look back as atrocities. They're not things that we revere our culture for. So I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't, you know, I'd say that what Daenerys did was also an atrocity and not not a good way to rule. Um, I, I like their bond. Like you said, Ashley, I mm -hmm. do think it shows the parallels between the Starks and the Lannisters and really... Even in the books, going back to the you know the first one, it's it it is set up as sort of this war between the Starks and the mm -hmm. Lannisters. It really all starts with them, and it makes sense that it kind of ends with them as well. Um, I thought it was a lovely scene. Mostly, there were things when he's like, "Danny is not her father." I'm like, "What? Did you see the last? <laughs> She's worse. Mm. He yeah. was only gonna firebomb the city." when he was losing it. She had just won it and she did it. She's absolutely her father and then some. So John was still being no nothing Jon Snow at the yeah. moment. I'm glad Tyrion could talk him out of that a little bit. But I thought it was a really, uh, just a really well acted scene, a really well acted episode across mm -hmm. the board. Yeah, no denying that. All my complaints for this season, none of them go to the actors who've mm. done remarkable work. And I think this episode showed off Peter Dinklage really well. Oh, they've been going for a couple episodes really hard to get him yeah. another Emmy. Yeah, and absolutely. the Emmys traditionally during the last season of the show uh, just rain down awards mm -hmm. upon. So, like, we're going to see Game of Thrones sweep. The Emmys yeah. because it's the last season. But what's I, go ahead, real sorry. quick? I also like that Tyrion owned it and said, "I betrayed my best friend and watched him burn." Yeah, yeah. I wasn't sure if because of the time limits if that would weigh on him, and I'm glad we got to have that moment. But that's his gimmick, and this is what frustrates me. This is Tyrion all the time. I messed up. I feel sad for me. I feel it drives me nuts already. Own up to your shit and kill yourself. Like I just. Oh, 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 you kill no, a million no, people. No, no, take no, care no, of your business. No, that's yes. not. No, I'm saying that's not it, okay. Yeah, to say. I can say that. It's going yeah, full yeah, that's, my opinion. <laughs> that's my opinion. That's what I feel. Uh, it, but let me ask you both this situation because it occurred to me as well, and maybe I'm stupid for feeling this way. But You're I'm not, watching. No one is stupid okay. for however they feel. I'm yeah. watching no one is two stupid. dudes decide what this woman, the fate of this I mean, woman. This, this book, the this optics book is of it written are by an old white man. The two yeah. showrunners are two white dudes. That's what I'm getting. I don't know what anyone expects. Well, I'm asking the, the women on the panel, am I over, am I misreading this? Am I trying to be too woke or whatever it is? But I'm watching two, two, two dudes decide what this, uh, what the fate should be of this mm -hmm. woman. Mm -hmm. Two lesser dudes deciding what should be the fate of this queen. And I think it's ridiculous. I mean, I, I don't think it's ridiculous because I think Danny is at a point where she needs... I mean, she needs to be taken down, put in her place. I don't know, but she needs a level of like guidance that she's not willing to accept. And for the rules that we know of this world, when you act in hubris, you get killed. Okay, but and and so for me, it does not. And like, Danny is not a character that I particularly liked. I was pretty sure she was going to die, so I was not moved or nor surprised by this personally. Okay. Um, and it does, you know, it doesn't mean it's the right choice. It just means that when I watched it. I was like, okay, so she's gonna die. Great. Okay. That's all. Yeah, yeah. I just don't, I don't think there's. Uh, if it was a if it was a man, I think they'd be having that same conversation. Yeah, I would agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, my bigger complaint that scene didn't rub me the wrong way, and that's not, certainly we know that Game of Thrones has had gender issues Absolutely. over its run. Mm -hmm. I the bigger problem I think is what Ashley referred to, which is like you know it's written by men across the board. Yeah, the show yeah, yeah. hasn't had a female writer in years. Or they haven't a had a female director or a person yep. of color. So that is that is something that would be of more concern to me than that particular scene mm. because I feel that that scene was built in the circumstances we found it in. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Um, John, <laughs> well, I just want to bring things up for conversation, yeah, right? Yeah, I think yeah, this yeah. is what people will be talking about You've afterwards. You've gone full Jorah. I respect <laughs> it. <laughs> and please, like, no one watching because um, John knows this. Like, we're, we're, just because we're at office yeah, 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 ends, yeah, like, yeah. we're not attacking no, you. No, We're not, not saying all. that you're not valid, anything no. like that. Um, Dennis, let's get your thoughts on this scene because we also have, because John is not going to do it. John mm -hmm. is saying, she is my queen. I'm not going to do it. She, he brings up Tyrion's uh, mistakes in the past mm -hmm. and his hypocrisy in the situation. Uh, and Tyrion tries to win him over by saying, you are the shield of men. Yes. You can decide this. They have an exchange about love is the death of duty and duty is the death of love and all that kind of stuff. Uh, they said duty. Tyrion is, po Tyrion is poisoning. I, I wrote John to get him to kill Danny. He uses his reasons. And then when he can't get him, he uses John's sisters. 
yeah. as reason. So the, he was pulling out all the stops here to try to appeal to him emotionally and uh, intelligently. Yeah, I intellectually. Mean, I, I personally wouldn't say he's poisoning his mind. He's just telling mm. him what he thinks is. I mean, he at this point, Tyrion knows that he's going to die. Right? right. So he has no vested interest in, in, in whatever. He he just thinking, okay, if Danny is continue going to continue to rule, mm-hmm. things like this in King's Landing are going to happen and worse because she she makes that speech. She's like, okay, we're not done here. Mm-hmm. We got all these other places. It's like, what do we know? What's going on in all those other places? We haven't heard of any type of. I don't know, a civil unrest or any type of like Mm -hmm. rebellion or anything like that. And she's like, all right, we're going to go here and there. So I actually like this scene a lot. I I like, uh, you know, Tyrion, look, with Jon Snow calling out his uh, past sins, people do that when they're defensive, when Mm -hmm. they want, they're defensive, especially of somebody else or, or maybe themselves they'll bring out uh, someone else's past faults or mistakes. And I mm-hmm. think that's what he was doing in, in that situation. Where right. I think deep down he knew he knew what was right and what was wrong. Even, and then even, remember, she, Tyrion asks him, he's like, would yeah. you have done it? Right. Because like, you've been on a dragon. And, and he's you know like, what I don't like. know. And you know that's a lie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know he wouldn't have done it. Tyrion knows that's a lie. Jon Snow knows that's a lie. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the bigger question. Like, does Jon Snow inherently know that what Danny? What she did was wrong. Right. The Jon Snow that killed the kid that killed him, right? The Jon Snow that killed a little child. I just huh? want to make sure that's clear. Killed like, what kid? No one's, without, oh. no one's without fault here. This is what I'm yeah. getting at. And this is what's frustrating yeah, to me. But, uh, is the, these two dudes deciding what they think the world's going to happen. And I just, it's super frustrating. Okay. The kid, you, she has you, one moment. You, you're talking about one moment. One of moment that burned like the, yeah, th- but, million, thousands yeah. of people. Okay, so we say, Danny, okay, let's not do that. Try talking to her. You're talking about the kid that killed John yeah, yeah, Snow. Yeah. That's a big difference between Daenerys and the people of Westeros. But he didn't kill John Snow randomly. He killed John Snow because John Snow made friends with the wildlings who killed his family. So everyone's everyone's killing everyone because they they have a personal interest involved. And you're watching this go along. So yeah, but did but you, then why did, does did it bother John, you that yeah. John did that more than Danny burning an entire city? <laughs> like we all you know we all have our favorites. They've all done bad things. And did John Theon Snow? Is my and did, favorite and, character. <laughs> and did John Snow <laughs> kill his parents? No. No. So. Wow. All right. <laughs> they um, all should have died, okay? <laughs> uh, I love the moment. You know, and I'm still, I, I, I didn't think, the, the, I didn't think the, the, the show was going to turn on her. I think, I thought, okay, mm. we're having these conversations. She's not crazy. She's having rational conversations about her belief of what she wants to do. She's not like going, blah, blah. she's not doing anything nutty. So she sees the Iron Throne and it's the music betrays you. The music feels mm-hmm. inspirational mm-hmm. and triumphant and she's and it calls back the vision from season two, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, and she walks up and when she touches it, you just hear this very powerful music cue and I thought, okay, maybe this is gonna happen. She turns, she sees John, they have a conversation there in the middle. Uh, that was the same though, as that was mm. going back when Jamie saw her father and killed him. Oh, uh, right. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And they, when Danny reaches for the throne in the books, they said that Ares was always bleeding yeah. from touching the throne. Like he could never be comfortable on the throne. So I was actually waiting for her hand to come away yeah. and be bleeding. Oh, with a little blood. But, yeah, but the okay. minute they revealed John, I was like, well, okay. bye, Danny. We're, <laughs> and then I pulled out my phone and we were 43 minutes in. <laughs> we're halfway through the episode. All right, let's talk about it. We got to the moment. So, uh, uh, John kills Danny. I thought it was really creatively shot. He tricks whether, her. Whether or not you liked it or not, because they're so close and the, the shot is so tight and they both breathe in. So for mm-hmm. a minute, you don't know who did it. Right. Um, right there's like right. that suspended moment, which I thought was like clever from a, a television storytelling point of view. Oh, it would have been awesome if she had killed him. <laughs> that's I, that's that, kind of what I thought. That would have been cool. In my opinion. <laughs> yeah. you, you erase the person who's in line for what you have. Um, Haley? Yeah. Um, I wasn't surprised. I okay. thought that was going to happen for okay. a while. I wasn't sure if it would be John, but I definitely didn't think Danny was making out of this, and I didn't think she'd be a hero. So mm-hmm. I was very prepared for that. I thought it was um, a nice scene, and I liked that they got to talk and have like a big, yes. big mm-hmm. adult conversation. Right. And I feel like it would have made such a difference for the rest of their their love story, which we didn't get to see any of. True. Uh, they're they're falling apart. If we had had, you know, like four more of those scenes yeah. where they legitimately got to have a conversation and we got to see that they really care about each other and why, 
You know, we got like the, the waterfall, but that was really more of a fantasy <laughs> well, moment. And that was, right. at this point, I know it was only maybe two or three, but it feels like ages ago. Yeah, yeah. So much has happened since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was, I guess my favorite part of it was just finally seeing some payoff to their relationship a little bit. Um, the, the death obviously didn't hit me quite as hard because I, I mm. felt that was inevitable. Mm. I'm conflicted, <laughs> as I am on many things in this episode, in that I love the imagery of Drogon burning the throne, but I cannot think of why a dragon it's a would do that. Heavy -handed. It was a lot heavy-handed. It was a lot. Yeah. Um, but I will say that I think the thing that got me more emotionally than anything in this episode was Drogon's little claw scooping her up. Yeah. It actually made me... That was Spread great. Tears. Absolutely, that was great. Dennis, she, he kisses her, he tricks mm -hmm. her to get her close to him, and then he stabs her uh, and kills her. I mean, um, I, I figured she was dying in this episode. So <laughs> that wasn't a big surprise she to me. She's giving herself to him, and she is saying, "Let's do this together. Let's break the wheel together." Yeah, Come but with he, me. but he's, Join but he's worried that she's going to keep doing the same thing, right? Which I think she is going to. Right. I mean, she's, I don't know, very. Uh, I don't know, filled with power. So, uh, I, I, you know, I had predicted that maybe Arya would have had something to do with this mm -hmm. death. I think right. that would have been cool if she, Arya had tried to kill. Because I, you know, I thought the whole point of Arya in the last episode and seeing all that destruction and escaping and then hopping on the white horse mm -hmm. was that she was going to go try and kill Danny. Right. I thought that was the point of it, and uh, she kind of get got thrown to the side. Um, but yeah, I mean, the death. Uh, her death by John's hands wasn't wasn't a surprise, but I think just maybe the way they did it was a little more. I guess what's the word more normal than <laughs> than I expected. <laughs> I thought, perhaps. Yeah, yeah, I thought they'd go a little bigger mm -hmm. than that. And remember, she, she never sits on the throne. She, no. she, yeah. she never she touches does. it. Right. She talks about it, but never actually sits on it. Mm -hmm. And then it goes away. Which yeah, heavy handed. I yeah. mean, do you guys think it's it's because John's a Targaryen, and that's why Drogon didn't build a fire on him? I think it's him? because they said, wouldn't it be cool if Drogon burned down the Iron Throne? Because <laughs> <laughs> honestly, I yeah. wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had a, a problem if he had uh, blown fire and Jon Snow died at that yeah. point. Sure. Mm -hmm. I kind of thought that might have been what was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's the Targaryen thing. There's no other in-world explanation that makes yes. any sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, Emma Fife, uh, we were tweeting back and forth when we started. She said to me, she's like, it would have been cool if Drogon had burnt, tried to burn John with fire yeah, and John and didn't die. Yeah. Or John, you know, didn't because he's mm. a Targaryen. It would have worked as well and would have called back. Obviously, Danny walking through the fire with the eggs would have been interesting but as this, well. This episode really seems to tell us that John is more a Stark yeah. than yeah. a Targaryen and more a Northman than anything. I mean, he literally winds up back at the wall. Yeah. yeah. And then North thereof. Um, some people are saying I have no brain cells. Other people are saying uh, that um, I, I keep going, Roka. Somebody said, shut it. So, I, you know, they're obviously, hey, obviously they're on, mad respectful. at me for be my respectful. very strong opinion about it all. Some dudes are on my side. Some people are. Some, they're calling me beta. I don't know what the kids mean with beta. I don't know what the hell that means at all. Uh, you guys can go home with that kind of crap. All right. Um, so he takes her and he disappears. Um, a world with no throne. I get the symbolism there. Uh, then hey, we... at least they didn't have the Westerosi elections. Because I thought, <laughs> oh, I thought oh, we were yeah, going to yeah, There do was that. a minute yeah. where, um, yeah. not to jump ahead too much, but where Sam no, was No, we're jumping making, in the next scene. That's definitely... Sam was making his speech, and, and it was lovely to see Sam again, and it yeah. was lovely to see Sam at the end, but I was like, I swear to God, if they vote... I'm gonna lose it. Like yeah. if, if if we cut to everyone dropping seashells yeah. or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So this we go to the next scene. It's a little bit of black frame. So obviously there's been some time. We don't yeah. get the we don't get the Russo brothers five years later, but we certainly get some time <laughs> yeah. later. Uh, we go and everyone that we were afraid we weren't gonna see again, as you mentioned, yeah. Ashley is there. Uh, Samuel Tarley. Um, you got Sweet Robin Aaron. Sweet Robin Aaron, who apparently, than ever. apparently <laughs> is a good looking guy now. Uh, uh, I literally turned to Haley and was like, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> Brian of Tarth is there. Gendry is there. Uh, a bunch of people are all sitting around there. Of course, Sansa sitting in the middle. Uh, mm -hmm. And with uh, Arya and Bran there. Um, and uh, they bring, uh, you know, Grey Worm, who apparently didn't kill Jon for killing Danny, brings out Tyrion. Tyrion, more bearded than ever, uh, is uh, brought out, and of course, he can't stay quiet, and he, he does his thing, and um, they vote on who should be king. 
So I want to be honest with everyone who's watching. At this point, I checked out mentally. Like I was done with the episode. So I will gladly hand it over to you all to talk about. But um, what did you think about this way of handling things, Haley? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, brand being king is a real situation. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I. That is one of those things that... I will have to process for a long time to fully land on like where I am on it. Can I can I give you a little uh, thought? Yeah. I mistakenly in our previous What the Throne episode said that John was the first POV chapter. He's not. Bran is actually the first POV mm. chapter in the Game of Thrones book mm. where he's learning about um, how to execute people. Mm -hmm. um, so I have been, I know you're a book reader, so yeah. I've kind of been stewing on that for a long time because I think series finales always tell you what the show has really been about the whole yeah. time. So I wonder, which is weird because he was absent from the entire fifth season. Yeah. yeah. Um, but if, if the show has always been telling us that Bran is the best person for this job. I could believe that, mm. absolutely. Uh, it's just that the way the show handled it, yeah. again, him yeah, being yeah. missing the whole season, it's yeah. a very strange thing to process. And there was a particular line, who has a better story than Bran the Broken, where I was like, everyone on that stage. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but he probably, I don't know, like not to jump ahead too much, but mm. the first thing he does, we see him do as king, is go Bran off to look for a dragon. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, I Tyrion's going to be the yeah, king. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I'm, I'm still iffy on yeah. the Bran mm -hmm. thing. I have to think it through. You make a very good point, and I think that you're right. Uh, in that they probably, in the book terms, were setting this up from page one. And I think when we get the next two books, which are rumored to be coming soon, um, I Although think it, it Martin might... went on his live journal and was yeah. like, I mean, no. Yeah, who knows? Um, but I think when we get the next two books, uh, hopefully that's flushed out a lot more and it makes yeah. more sense instead of like, I, I know why mm. you're feeling the way that you're feeling. It does kind sure. of feel like it hits you up upside the yeah. head a little bit. It's dumb. <laughs> Bran, from what we know of Bran's abilities, first of all, Brandon craps for four seasons. Mm. And from what we know of his abilities, he could have set this whole thing up for himself to sit on the throne. So it looks like, and people are thinking I'm yelling at guys like I'm yelling, so I'll keep you know, on. Stop being so mean. I oh, know, I'm passionate. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a very passionate guy. But I'm saying it feels to me like you could absolutely push the narrative that Bran has been planning this from the beginning and has been moving the pieces into place sure. so that he could end up on the Iron Throne because he saw a vision for himself that he would be king. It's like, I'm going to make this happen. La, la, la. Well, and he strings. does say, why do you think I came all the way down here? Which yeah, was he such yeah. a yeah. millennial thing to say. But anyway, yeah, I, I was just like so I think frustrated. He's technically too young to be yeah. a millennial. Yeah, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but that, it, it's an interesting thought that crossed my mind. Like, is he kind of a villain a little yes. bit? Yeah. Like that line definitely hints that he was he was rigging the game in a certain way mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that makes him look bad. I'm not sure if that was intentional mm -hmm. or just a little sloppy in the writing department. Yeah, but it crossed my mind. I definitely right. had that it thought. Feels yeah. a little Dennis. Uh, no, so this is where I agree with you. Okay, you know, so I disagree with you with the first half. Okay, but I agree with you here because in the context of the show, it may be different in the books. Yeah, but in the context of the show, his character is not. It's not even one of the top leading characters, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Obviously you have like Jon Snow, Tyrion, and Daenerys are mm -hmm. like three at the top, and then you have uh, another level of like Sansa and Arya, yeah. uh, uh, Jaime and Cersei and, and whatnot. His is like even below, the, like he is way down there, so mm -hmm. I just don't see the point of him. Like I said in many, many reviews and many, many podcasts, he is a plot device. Yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he's not a character. You know, you don't he, care. He, he he stopped being a character a long time ago. Yeah. He does a lot of exposition. So him being king, like, sure, I guess, like in their logic, they think, okay, he's the best one to be. But like in the context of the story, mm -hmm. I just don't see the point of why. Do he, you think, just to play devil's advocate, that it is perhaps because we t we had talked about breaking the wheel? What is the antithesis of the brave, stalwart, physically strong king? Mm -hmm than a, a very physically disabled mm -hmm. intellect who's maybe a Targaryen spirit, maybe? I mean, that's <laughs> fine, but then you gotta take that character and mm -hmm. build him through right. all yeah. the seasons, yeah. from right. season one all the way to season mm -hmm. eight, and be like, okay, that, that guy, maybe he could yeah. possibly, just like with Tyrion, right? Because a yeah. lot of times people, including myself, were like, I want Tyrion to be, end up on the Iron Throne. Mm -hmm. It's like, he's gone through a lot, he's, you know, he's obviously faced a lot of obstacles in his life, and we kind of go back and forth about his decisions. Some are smart, some are dumb. 
we never got that with Bran. Mm -hmm. So right. that's why like him ending on the, being king, sure, maybe in their world it's fine, but in us as the viewer watching mm -hmm. the show, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. I will say that I think that you are, again, very much on point in terms of like him being called Keep Bran. Keep telling me how great yeah, I yeah, am, yeah. Really. <laughs> In terms of him being Bran the Broken, mm -hmm. you know, it could have been Bran the Raven or many other titles, but yeah. Bran the Broken, and it goes back to this, you know, Tyrion's, quote way back when about cripples bastards and broken, broken things, things. Mm. was always sort of the heart of this story so that that does make a lot of sense as this you know opposite of what you expect a hero to be but you are also very mm. right that the show did not build it yeah. that's yeah that's the thing at the end of the day that i felt as well the show does not build it so when it happens it's like it feels like a cop-out to me they didn't want to go with the more bold choice which is have john kind of assume the throne mm -hmm. and then people would be super pissed monday morning but at least it's a bold choice this was a flaccid choice let's pick the kid who no one's going to get mad about because he's in the wheelchair because we haven't seen him much you can't put too much on i don't him. know whoever and, oh, i don't know if they could have put anyone on the throne though that the internet wouldn't have said yeah. was the worst choice. Like if it had been Danny, people would have been mad. If it would have been John, people would have been mad. If it would have been yeah. uh, Yara or Edmure or like uh, that, 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 sure. that, that, yeah. Yeah. down the yeah. list. That was one of the best scenes though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Please I mean, sit. Shout out, to, uh, shout out to Tanner from uh, uh, James Bond. He's great. But like, I just, I don't know if any choice would have made everyone yeah. happy. You, know, you talk about the reaction on Monday morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But look at this also. Look, I, you know, I'm, I have, I host the, sh I host the show. We talk about this. Mm. I have to throw my two cents Absolutely. in. I hated this scene. Hated this scene because nobody came out looking. I mean, Sam, talk about democracy at this stage in governments is is all borderline fantasy, ironically. And then you have. All these other people talking and doing what they did. Edmure was very funny. That was a great moment. But why does Tyrion get to influence the council about who they should pick as king? Because he's the smartest character on the show. Uh, and because I, they want Peter ridiculous. And because they wanted Peter Dinklage to have one more speech. Yeah. I, yeah. You and can he's see a prisoner. lot of the mechanics of how we're making the show in this episode. Right. Grey Worm doesn't care. That's all ridiculous to me that, yeah. Grey Worm, that him and Jon Snow were left alive by the Dothraki and the Unsullied. No effing way that's happening. But yeah. we had to go with the, with the narrative. That's done. Then they choose. Then we have Sansa swinging her power and go, you know what? I'm not going to be part of the Seven Kingdoms anymore. I couldn't We're believe that. And that That's Yara wasn't immediately like, well, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then Yara was like, no, I, I, I gave my allegiance to Danny. I don't like what happened here. And Arya, in her snootiness, go, who's no one, by the way, goes, just an assassin, just an assassin. Let's make that clear. Just goes, if you talk about my brother again, I'm going to kill you. Like, we're, we're back to what, high school? What, it, it just frustrated the crap out of me to watch this scene because I thought the Starks came off like dicks. Mm -hmm. Like total. We They were mad that Danny was going to do the world she the way she wanted to do it. But they have no problem doing the world they want the, the, the way they want to do it. And I thought it was jerky. So why does that make you mad, though? You think they're bitches, but no, Danny slaughtered a city. I'm just using my colloquial oh, oh, version oh, sorry, of bitches. Sorry. The okay, Starks okay. together are mm -hmm. being bitchy. Okay. Mm -hmm. But like... Uh, like again, Danny slaughtered a city, and you just don't like their attitude. So I'm not sure I understand why that infuriates you so much. Because in comparison. I think because I think Danny fought through so many things in terms of world building, not personal issues, mm -hmm. world building. She was conquering countries and freeing slaves and building, learning how to rule as she went along. No one on that show has any credibility to rule the Seven Kingdoms other than Danny, because Danny's the experience. She's been there. She's been abroad. She's seen it. Uh, so many things, and but Sansa, she's never who's been, been ruling Winterfell yeah. for five she's minutes, she's never been to Westeros. She knows she nothing know. about the people that she's supposed to lead, which is why they all hate her when she gets there. Sure, but she also because she's on. a foreigner and brings, and you see the way they look at the foreign dark people too. That doesn't Absolutely. help. Absolutely, right? Very true. But also, she bailed on those civilizations, the ones that she freed and and fixed. Right. She left them in turmoil with so, Marine and all that. Yeah. Right, right. So that's not very good leadership. Well, I think she was learning as she went along. I think th this has been my contention since the since that moment in the bells that she did what she did because she didn't want to repeat of marine she wanted to destroy everyone and build on top of the ashes a better world a better kingdom in her mind yeah right this is what all the starks are doing we want to build the world the way we want to build it and you know sansa wielding her power okay it's cool it's empowering and all that jazz but to me i thought it was so out of place and very entitled she was entitled to say to Bran, my brother. Her brother's going to be like, no, you don't get to step out of this situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, you go ahead. It just felt to me a bit entitled all around and that frustrated. And Yara being shut down by, by Arya was ridiculous. <laughs> I thought that was ridiculous. She's the queen of a kingdom. You're an assassin. 
She should not be speaking out of turn to her in that way. If, if we're going to talk about if Yara respect is throwing for her support titles. behind Bran, she's not the queen of a kingdom anymore. Right. She is a lady well, of no, the no, Iron she Isles, was but she is not the queen of the Iron she Isles. Was a, okay. My issue, though, is, is that with the Starks, it's like, I don't know how, if they would all go along with it because they're like, well, one of the Starks is king now, mm -hmm. and then the North is is separate on mm -hmm. their own. Mm -hmm. It's like they're getting too much, right? It's the a Lord, big the, power play for the, the Starks, yeah. But, I mean, I'm pretty sure some lords would, would push back on mm -hmm. there. Like, okay, that's fine if you want Bran to be king. We can't have the North separate as well. Yeah. Or mm -hmm. you have the North separate and you have someone else being being king. Um, uh, John Reedy from mm. the Super Chat had wrote... Uh, John killed Danny because she confirmed what Tyrion said. She said that those that rule get to choose and what is good, while John knows good is good and bad is bad, there is no middle ground with John. Well, there's no middle ground with um, every, anyone on the show, which is interesting because all the characters live in this gray area. Mm -hmm. But they all, everyone thinks, even the most despicable character, even Ramsay Bolton, they all think that they know what's best. Um, and what we're debating is basically whether or not we agree on who yeah. we right. think. Do we like, yeah. personally yeah. like this person yeah. or not? Yeah. Yeah. I personally like, I personally respect Danny, and I get pe people calling her a tyrant is hilarious to me, but I, I personally respect Danny for what she was trying to do. Her mission was to try to break the wheel, to try to free slaves. She did that. She freed slaves all over the place. You know what I'm saying? While other people were trying to be, you know, as to use... Uh, Haley's word bitchy about ruling she was off trying to rule kingdoms trying at least mm -hmm. and so I just don't think uh, putting Brandon on the throne makes any sense to me overall um, but anyway John the, it makes it goes down uh, uh, Tyrion now goes to talk to John and says to John uh, they've made a decision. Uh, hey, thanks for killing the queen. You get to go back to the Night's Watch. Uh, which Before, is really, really quick. Yes. I have one thing. Sure, sorry. Before we leave the, that whole king situation mm -hmm. behind, isn't Gendry now the heir because she legitimized him? <laughs> like, why did that not she did. come up? That's a great point, Haley. Um, we sort of glossed over all of that real quickly, right? Like, yeah. Right. Uh, they sort of very really quickly agreed that they would decide who great the king point, was. Haley. Yeah. Um, no one really was, put themselves forwards except Ed Muir, which was the joke. And then we just agreed with what Tyrion said because we had to move the scene along. I guess it would have been mm -hmm. nice if it was brought up that he was actually the legitimate heir at this Even point. Even if he said thanks, no, no thanks. Yeah, 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 yeah right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, just an interesting thing. Mm. Sorry. To do no, no, right. that's a great point. That's a that's once again because his last name wasn't Stark, he doesn't get to be king they, <laughs> for the story writers. Um, but yeah, Gendry should have could have absolutely laid claim to it and said, you know, I'm the bastard son of Robert Baratheon. I should have a claim to the throne. Yeah, you know? But his personality, we know him. His character would not do that. He would, you know, and he has very little experience. He doesn't even know how to rule his own. Uh, I mean, can he his, read? How much? Just does honestly, Brian? huh? Like, can can Gendry read? Oh, I'm not saying he's the best choice. No, 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 well, I mean, the the whole thing, yeah. I understand why they're trying to go for. They're she trying to say, like, that. Tyrion is saying, look, he has all the history of men in him, so he knows all the stories, and therefore he's seen the bad and the good and the decisions made. Yeah. Like I said before, though, because his character wasn't really a character that they developed yeah. through this series, it, it just didn't didn't hit home. I like the way you're saying it. Yeah. It and makes I, more sense. I guess yeah. because he's a three-eyed raven, he's supposed to be a bit above it all yes. in a way mm -hmm. that us lowly humans wouldn't be. He doesn't really want anymore. Yeah. 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 Yes. Well, if not wanting the kingdom is a prerequisite for being king, then Jon Snow should have been the king, pulled him out of prison and <laughs> well, put him so right on the Ned throne. <laughs> right. If yeah. not wanting it is a prerequisite. So Jon gets sent back to the Night's Watch by Tyrion of all people, who's the one that convinced him to kill Danny. It is so terrible what happens to John, who has been in service of every single person sitting there in their no, high and mighty position. No, this is the position. perfect ending for <laughs> no, John. <laughs> the only place John has ever gone where he was happy, where he did well, where he found love, was north of the wall. He gets his dog back. He gets to go with Tormund. They go off with him to be the new children of the... This is the perfect end. Ghost gets his scritches. Oh. He, he gets his little pet. Like yes. Everyone was so upset that yeah. he didn't pet him. It was all leading up Respect to this scene. Respect the dire yeah. this, this, this You're is glossing the a lot of things over. This is the equivalent of like Harry Potter, the boy 
under the cupboard, gets to marry the girl of his dreams and, and have children and get everything he wants. This is John getting everything he wants. Yeah, but then Harry got it. We got the cursed child. How did that work out? That I don't know. Wasn't I didn't really... waste my time reading yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but look, John also was killed at the Night's Watch. John also had he, he he goes, killed in front of him at the Night's Watch. North, so you, you're glossing over back. some things over. You're glossing over. It wasn't an uh, awesome experience to be out there. Danny it wasn't, wasn't an college. awesome leader. Like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, I, it's an, I just felt like he was he was like he was constantly in service of other people on the show mm -hmm. and this was a terrible ending for him he gets banished again he can't have children can't have a wife and he, why does he get to get punished like this when other people were influencing him who now are in higher positions of power and get to get the fruit of the spoils of victory while he has to go suffer at the Night's Watch? That's well, bull crap. I mean, I don't know if he wants to have a wife and kids now that he's been through two of loves of his life died, mm. one by his own hand. Right, right. Um, and the other part is when you're talking about him being in service, everyone... Basically, that's what he did when he kills Danny. Yeah. He knows that when he kills Danny, he's going to probably get killed. Probably die, yeah. And then since he didn't get killed, he gets sentenced to the, the Night's Watch and whatnot. So it, it's in line with his character. He he basically did that for the, you know, the mm -hmm. best thing for the realm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Dorian is chiming in on Slack because Dorian uh, thinks he knows everything. He says... Uh, uh, John killed Danny because, oh yeah, no, you, no, read, that. Read, you that. read that already. All right, because yeah. he paid top dollar. All right, fine. Um, <laughs> I, I'm still getting destroyed here. I'm sorry I'm being so passionate about it. I apologize. Uh, not just that, not not only do we get John going off with the wildlings and having a great time there into the woods. Does this mean he's leaving the Night's Watch? He just leaves the Night's Watch. Uh, yeah, right? yeah. Right? yeah. looked like yeah, he was yeah. bailing. So they told him to do this. He goes, okay, and now he's bailing too. So like, what the is, Starks clearly don't care what the rules are. What does he have left to care about in the kingdom, really? What are they going to do, kill him? And, and they don't really, yeah, all, they want, all that is is to to appease the Unsullied and the Dothraki. Right. Right. Say, so, look, he's not going to be okay. part of this anymore. We're sending him away. As long as he's away and has nothing to do with the rest of the Westeros, <laughs> yeah, then so they're So they're not going to hold him to the promise no. that they made to the Unsullied There's also the no Dothraki. point to the Night's Watch anymore. They were meant yeah. to guard against right. the forces of the Night King and things like that. True. He would have nothing to do. He he has a purpose with the wildlings to help them mm -hmm. build their society. And we saw um, when they were walking in the snow, we saw a little sprout. So spring yeah. is in the air. Mm -hmm. oh, spring a dream is coming. of spring. Yeah. So spring is coming. I May guess. it come right. soon. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Brienne uh, writes in the records and, uh, you know, apparently Jamie Lance Lannister gets to get a nice little uh, epilogue to his life there. This is the thing that I felt conflicted about. Yeah, all right, tell me. Um, I had two feelings. The um, the sort of part of me that is more writerly and trying to think about these characters' arcs, um, whether my opinions are right or wrong, is like, oh, you're going to reduce Brienne's final moment to being about a man who ultimately didn't love her in the end. <laughs> but then the romantic part of me was like, that's really sweet because Jamie wrote her name in the book and now she's going to like finish Jamie's chapter and give him a, like the sweet ending that he did. Like she gives him a nice mm -hmm. end. She does. Because when you see what's written there and it's exactly what's written about him in the book, um, she writes a mm. lot of his history and she makes him out to be perhaps more heroic than you might think. So like, I'm conflicted about what this, if this is the final time we're going to see Brienne, what this is telling us about her. But yeah. I do love that she winds up as the leader of the Kingsguard mm -hmm. and that Podrick is a Kingsguard. Yeah, true. We do we do get that. We should mention that then. Then we get this uh, nice scene from Friends where everyone shows up and makes <laughs> jokes. Uh, apparently the ashes have stopped burning of people and so people can start joking now while they're on this table. We have Braun. We have, uh, like you said, uh, Sam. Davos. Sam, da who's now a maester or grand maester. Yeah. Grand, yeah. grand maester. Uh, Bron being is master of coin is hilarious. Yes, on it, so it, many levels. And he, good punchline. And he, he, he freaking gets um, high guard. Yeah, yeah, high guard. He like, did get it in like, the that's end. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, but we get a little moment of uh, uh, Tyrion's PTSD moving the chairs around, and, or not PTSD. What do you call that? OCD. Sorry. OCD. OCD moving stuff around. I have OCD, so trust me, I get it. And then he sits down, and everyone pulls up, and it's a, it's a. I almost heard the Friends theme in my mind mm -hmm. as I was watching this little jokey mm -hmm. session. Then uh, Bran shows up, uh, King Bran, King Bran the Broken shows up uh, and uh, for literally five seconds and they he goes, uh, all right, uh, we'll work on that. Great, I'm going to go warg with the dragon. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, ridiculous. I don't know. What did you all think of that kind of, that whole interaction and the ending of it? Um, I appreciated that the show is trying to give us a moment of levity and we're trying to be like, look, things are back to normal. Things are going to be okay. But... Um, 
But again, I just think because of the geography and how compressed it was, that's why it feels weird. And mm-hmm. that's why it is this big oh tonal God. shift. Yep. And we cut after the scene where we're back in the dragon pit, we kind of cut to like the clip show, right? Of where everyone winds up. And that's mm-hmm. where we get the scene with, uh, with Brian. I, I do think it's interesting that we basically see Bran being like an absentee leader. Yes. Um, and, and again, I'm not quite sure what that's trying to tell us about Bran as the king. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm not I'm not sure if the people who wrote it know either. I, I don't understand how you make the king, the guy who's like, I don't feel emotion anymore. I'm not connected to the world anymore. I don't care. Okay, I'm all right. I'm not. Why you make that guy the king? He's not going to feel empathy. He's not going to understand and connect to people. It makes no sense. But I think that's the point. Is the that, first time is that Cersei and you want. Danny and Rob are, were all like too fiery and too emotional. Mm-hmm. So now we're swinging the pendulum <laughs> The other way. What's wrong with emotion? I don't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> I, I mean, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it, this is—it's a—it's um, a. Fa- oh God! Someone says. Uh, someone says. Uh, Isaiah Freeman. Roka wants to burn children. I don't want to burn children. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. You're right. supposed to burn John Snow so many children. Times. <laughs> <laughs> Loves <true>. burning children. <laughs> <laughs> it's my pastime. Vikram, uh, Vikram, who in the top dollar chat said, "Is the wheel really broken, or was a new one formed?" Ah, what if an yeah. evil ruler is elected at some point in the future? Do they commit treason and kill that person? And the whole cycle repeats again. Yes, welcome to the Matrix. Uh, th- this is also fascinating because that ending, they all feel like self-righteous that they've done the right thing and they've broken the wheel and we're going to go forward with Bran and see what happens because there have been plenty of kings who've had children who didn't have anything negative happen mm-hmm. afterwards. Tyrion used that logic to support Bran being king and it's just interesting how he goes down that road. But this bu- the, the series of books that inspired this television show is famously based on the War of the Roses. The War of the Roses mm-hmm ends with the Tudor dynasty beginning, Tudors being a very low house that upjumped and made themselves kings. That's exactly what the Starks did. Yeah. yeah. Um, so if you're sort of looking at it from that macrocosm, um, I think it makes a lot more sense whether or not it's to your taste Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is, is another question. Look, and I defended the show last week. Sure. Thoroughly mm-hmm. defended the yep. show last week. And I loved what happened. And so I guess that's why I'm disappointed today because and I'm you're, getting, you're catching me fresh after watching the, the show. Yeah. So I yeah, have my yeah. feelings going hardcore. I uh, think that go- Bran being king isn't supposed to be met with this universal Mm. like he's gonna Mm -hmm. be a good ruler i don't think that that was ever the ending we were gonna get a perfect ruler Mm -hmm. and i think it's probably intentional that the first thing he does is warg off and that he's he is absentee as you sort Mm -hmm. of said i i think we're supposed to feel conflicted about it and that yes maybe a new wheel has been built uh, right. And we can we can hope that it's a better wheel mm-hmm. that that doesn't roll over people so much. But <laughs> I definitely don't think we're supposed to be like, yay, all the good guys won and everything's right. Yeah, yeah. That's well, I mean, they basically replaced the monarchy with an oligarchy, so yeah. it's supposed to be yeah. like, I guess, one step a little closer to, yeah. to, to democracy. democracy. Yeah, they right. couldn't go all the way, which I'm glad they didn't, because that would have been really <laughs> cheesy if they if they all I decided on that. I honestly thought we were going to jump right to representational democracy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm glad we didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. glad we didn't. A Congress, <laughs> yeah, right. we yeah. that or, or some kind one of. more quick thing,s yeah. in the in the vein of the Friends jokes, I I actually appreciated the grammar callback to Stannis when Davos. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Good point. Fewer. Uh, yes. <laughs> can't stop Mep. He uh, uh, commented here. I agree with you, Roka. Everyone against you. Come on. The show that the show showed that John didn't want to go back, and even he felt wrong killing Danny. Right? Because he says that to Tyrion. Mm-hmm. Right? Right. He mm-hmm. says, "Did I do the right thing? Did I do the right thing?" And Tyrion, in all this casualness, goes, "Ask me in ten years." Again, we don't. I don't think we're supposed to feel firm mm-hmm. on if this is good mm-hmm. or bad right. leadership. Yeah, but I feel, oh, <laughs> I, yeah, we're not supposed to feel firm, but Tyrion gets to go like, well, ask me in 10 years, boo, 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 I survived. But uh, that's fair because you yeah. can't understand the complete, like even what we're doing here today, if we talk about, if we all come back here in 10 years mm-hmm. and talk about the show, like, like history and hindsight gives you an insight into events that the day later, the week later, six mm-hmm. months later doesn't. Like, I thought that was a very valid thing for Tyrion to it's say. A pretty wise thing to yeah. say. <laughs> It's a, it's a self-service thing to say, too. He could have refused the hand of the king to the point of death. At principle. He could have said, I don't want to be hand of the king. If you want me to be hand of the king, you will have to execute me. But he didn't. Why? Because he took the way out to keep himself alive. Sure, of course. I will say that I think that maybe his reaction to being offered hand of the king might win that Emmy for him. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was so good. It was good. Yeah. Can't the deny that. The beard was magnificent in yeah. this scene as well. <laughs> uh, Brandy Schweigel Brock comments here a uh, little powerfully. What in seven hells did we just get dumped on us? Ten years of fans and they kick us in the teeth. But at least John hugged his wolf. All right, there you go. See, it's it's wow. very split. It's very split with some of these uh, comments from the fans, and it's certainly feeling that way in the chat. Um, someone donated some money but didn't comment at all. All right, cool. Respect that. Um, we talked about uh, this whole thing, the table. John and Tom reunited. John leaves the night watch with the Wildlings. We already covered that, and that's how the show ends. Uh, before we move on to talking about the, se the season and then the series, any final thoughts on the show? The show's first the shot is north of the wall, and the final shot is north of the wall. Nice. Yeah. We, oh, right. And we see Arya going off yes. to going west, west of Westeros, yeah. mm -hmm. seeing what's out and there. Excuse me, Sansa, Queen in the Nerf. She's Queen yeah. in the yeah. Nerf. Yeah. That's uh, true. Uh, on a looking, dope throne. Yeah. yeah. Such a cool throne. Awesome throne. Amazing costume. Mm, Michelle Clapton, just a genius. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I. I guess what I have to say is that the reason you are mad is you very much did not get what you want. A lot of the things that happened in this, Bran, they're mm -hmm. all kind of things I wanted to happen. Sansa ending up on a throne was mm -hmm. something I was very much looking forward to and hoping for. Uh, Arya going off her own way was something I was hoping mm -hmm. that would happen. Mm -hmm. Danny going down and not being the leader was something I was going, hoping would happen. So while I'm going to be parsing through like the specifics of my feelings on this for a really long time, I'm one of the people who ultimately got the majority of what I wanted to happen yeah. Yeah. in a way that was at least moderately satisfying. Mm -hmm. well, I, I would push back a little bit, Haley. It's not because I didn't oh, get what I wanted. Like <laughs> <if you> didn't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Wouldn't be like us if we didn't. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not going to say I, it's, I'm mad because I didn't get what I wanted. It's more like you could have had everything happen in this uh, episode tonight. And I think this is the first time I felt this way. Yeah. It was rushed. And I think I could have, if we had taken some time to live in these moments and see some more time, more scenes, I think I would have accepted this a little bit easier. Yeah. And I could have accepted Danny getting and killed that's a big, by that's John a big and all that. That's a big problem of this yeah. season and it's of the, the last time I felt this two way. seasons. Yeah. I yeah. would encourage people, though, um, I know we all have strong reactions and I know that you want to use colorful language, but no one went into making the show to hurt any of our feelings. <laughs> right, right, right. No one is attacking yeah. us personally. Yes. Even watching this episode, even not loving every aspect of this episode, you can see the love and the care and the dedication that went into the mm -hmm. show. And I would encourage people to try to focus on that mm -hmm. and think about the things that bother them before you at anyone on Twitter. Well, and I don't, <laughs> I don't mean to diminish your opinion no, no. by saying you didn't get what you want. Mm -hmm. I think that's a natural reaction to be angrier when it doesn't go the way you were kind of hoping mm -hmm. for. It wasn't saying that like, your opinion is wrong. No, just no, I, I know that. Yeah. I just, I would have accepted things, I think, a little bit more if I had, if I just seen some logic. That's what I was looking for, yeah. is the logic in what was happening. Mm -hmm. It's not so much, did I get it, not one, it's more about logic, and I didn't follow the logic of why they made the decisions they made. Mm -hmm. And I certainly don't blame Benioff and Weiser. Mm -hmm. This is Listen, their show. Just, just start a petition. That's all. That's all you gotta do. <laughs> start a petition, get a few hundred thousand don't people to sign me it. like that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see if we got one more comment here. Uh, Lance Dorr, what if Bran accepted the role of the king because he knew that Tyrion would be the right choice to be the power behind the throne, but everyone could not accept him being the face? That's an interesting question. It Kinda is. Kind of where he's the vice president, mm -hmm. but really the president type mm -hmm. thing, maybe. Dick Cheney. Really, possibly. Huh. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully not like that. No, but I mean. Uh, Shantha Ram says, Tyrion could have been the king of the six kingdoms and Bran could have been the master of whispers because he is the three-eyed mm. raven. He can cover he the got, entire world by birds. warging, so disappointing about that. He does That's a great literal point. So I yeah, like that yeah. point. I think, too, um, a lot of our issues with um, the amount of time spent with and, and moments and context, I really think, and this is bad because we're talking about a TV show, I think that's going to be cleared up in the books. And mm -hmm. I know that we're just here to judge the merits mm -hmm. of the show sure, sure. based on the show. But if people really love these characters and are invested in the story, I think we have that to look forward to at least. Yeah, yeah. and the thing is, is George R. R. Martin gave the the ending and kind of like the, the plot points yeah. to yeah. Benioff and Weiss. Yeah. So I don't think that the books in terms of the big plot points are, strokes, are, are, yeah. are, are gonna be much different than yeah. what we saw. But they'll probably just be more fleshed out mm -hmm. yeah. and maybe like you said before, and I think a lot of us have, have, have said is these last two seasons have been rushed mm -hmm. yeah. and Very it's much. a lot of behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So yeah. that's I think my biggest issue with maybe this episode or the season or, mm -hmm. or, 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 or in general. Mm -hmm. That's very much, I, as someone who was very frustrated by the last two episodes, 
my complaint was always it's not what happened but how it happened exactly. yeah that's yeah. how i felt this episode uh, how enough. it how it happened yeah um ellie de prima uh, says was really hoping that brianne would be pregnant with jamie's baby interesting. Oh. interesting all right that's, that's a way to go your I opinion suppose. isn't wrong but Haley and i just clutched our pearls <laughs> <laughs> i like this uh jesse keeg baka said what about king hot pie that could have been possible in this situation. is hot pie alive i, I believe I he's, he's he is, working yeah. on his gravy hot pie is so <laughs> Um, that's awesome. All right. All right. Let's talk about the, uh, uh, I think the season as a whole, I think the overall feeling is it's a bit rushed. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, can you, uh, were there a lot of positives though overall yeah. that you felt about the season? I, I definitely think there's more positives than negatives mm -hmm. for me. And I think when I look back on the show, it's, it is, I've fallen in and out of love with Game of Thrones over the last decade a lot for mm -hmm. a lot of different reasons. But I think on the whole, it is been a very positive experience for me. I'm glad that I experienced the show in real time. Um, and I liked this finale. Okay. So. All right, Haley. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Haley, thoughts? Uh, I'm a little less generous to this season, just as I was last season. I mm -hmm. was uh, very disappointed with both seasons, again, because of the pacing thing, because of the lack of dialogue and all the mm -hmm. things that I loved about the story to begin with, the, the deep investment in politics and the deep investment in dialogue and clever writing all just kind of got brushed aside for plot and mm -hmm. that, that doesn't really suit me. It's the moments that we did get investment in dialogue and, and character that, that made me mm -hmm. stick with it and mm -hmm. made me still feel that it was worth it. I also am more satisfied than not by this mm -hmm. finale, mm. but definitely overall the season is is a disappointment for me and it makes me kind of sad. Mm -hmm. I just wish, you know, you look at the the beautiful, understated, quiet moments and the, the, the sheer volume of them in the first four seasons, mm -hmm. and, and I don't think we got as much in the last two seasons as we did in the first mm -hmm. four. Well, that's fair. Uh, Dennis? Yeah, I agree a lot with what you said in terms of wanting some of more of the choir. I mean, all, usually the best scenes in Game of Thrones is their dialogue scenes. They're, they're just between two characters that talk about their relationship or the history of certain things, and you got less of that in the last two seasons. I did enjoy the season more than I didn't. Mm -hmm. I, I liked quite a few of the episodes, and yeah, it was more the pacing issue. It, I, I do think people are being very harsh on Benioff and Weiss because mm -hmm. people forget, they, they look at the first... Let's say, let's say if you want to say the sixth season is the cutoff. They look at it and go, oh, well, they just had the source material, and then that's why everything was great or whatever. It's mm -hmm. like there's a lot of stuff in there that they also created yeah. based on the source mm -hmm. material. It, it's not all just, you know, taking what the book is and turning it into the show. They, there's a lot of different plots and characters and dialogue that's different. So. Arya and Tywin was then. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. that's yeah. a that, brilliant stroke. Yeah. That was yeah. some of my favorite yeah. stuff from the entire series, yeah. and that, has, yeah. that wasn't in the book. Right. So I think people mm -hmm. are, I think it's a case of the rush thing that they want to move on. The actor, people forget the actors want to move on. Yeah, they, they do. love being on HBO the show. HBO wanted another <laughs> season, yeah. yes. and yeah. then everyone else said, "No, thank you." Yeah, they're only contractually obligated to do X amount yeah. of seasons, and then in order to get them back, they'll have to pay a ton of money. Yep. Um, and and you know they, they were just like, okay, that's why it's so rushed. They're like, okay, we just got to hit these beats. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, I think yeah. Part of the anger, though, is that the way they address it in interviews is they will not just admit they wanted to leave. They yeah. say things like, we always knew it'd be about 73 hours, which is one of the craziest things I've yeah, ever heard. Yeah, yeah. Do you mean the actors yeah. or do you mean Ben Affleck? Ben Affleck. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 They could just say, we want to make our Star Wars trilogy <laughs> yeah. and everyone would be like, okay, fine. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, good point. But we 73 hours is, is the goofiest thing you yes. could have said. No one's ever <laughs> put it down to that yeah, exactly. exactly. Well, you think about it, you're like, how long hours is 73 point, hours? Yeah. 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 How many yeah, days is that? <laughs> That's a great point. Oh, yeah, I would say, I, I would have to say I feel more in the positive, way more in the positive about this season than most. I enjoyed this season all the way up until this episode. No lie. I, I had no problem with the rushing because I guess I kind of had seen these things before. I'm like, okay, they paid them off here, paid them off mm -hmm. here, paid them off here. So I'd seen the groundwork for just about everything that happened this season. And yes, I get the Danny situation. Just wanted it to play a little bit better. If they had mm -hmm. killed her in the last 
20 minutes of the show, that would have been something. I would have it been okay with that. It did feel early. But once yes. again, rushed, yeah. rushed. Yeah. And I agree. Because that last 45 minutes of the show or 35 minutes of the show were just, that's the, the longest day in my It almost felt like Lord of the Rings. That the was, last but six separate endings. That could all have been black six frames. episodes right there. Yeah. Like Fair everything points. that happened in, in the last 45 minutes. Yeah. Absolutely. Six episodes. Absolutely. Frodo never burned any children, John. <laughs> he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> that we know of. Uh, but no, but I, you know, I, I was more, I enjoyed it. I thought the acting was, but I agree with Haley. There were not enough of these great uh, scenes of dialogue that were essential to the show mm -hmm. and building our love of the show over so many seasons, right? These uh, great actors who step into these roles and have these great back and forths and really find the complexity in the scenes and the layers that they're playing and have them play off of each other. And you see that actors are enjoying being in scenes together. But I think the way they turn the Night King into a one episode one off, the way they turn Cersei into a uh, into a, such a flaccid ending with no absolutely no tricks up her sleeve was terrible. The disservice they did to some of these characters, and I'm going to include Danny as well in this and John to a degree, the disservice I felt they did to some of their the main characters will leave a bad taste in my mouth uh, for quite some time. I, I don't know if I'll watch this. This may be the first episode this season that I won't go right home and watch. Mm. And that that breaks my heart because I love this show. No matter what people are saying in the chat, I love this show to pieces mm. and to see it end this way I felt was you a bit... You could have complex feelings about a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the world. Oh, maybe she did break. They did break the wheel. Uh, but let's, let's talk about the show overall. Let's start with you, Dennis. You know, host, you hosting what, what the Throne, read the books. Uh, oh, you read, read the books. I have not read But you books. host the, What the Throne. You better start tomorrow. I, actually, actually, I, have. I purposely, uh, you know, yeah, I, set aside I, time. I've no, I've downloaded all the Audible ah. books that, uh, mm. up into you know, obviously where George R. R. Martin has left off, yeah. and I purposely, you know, decided that I was going to start listening slash mm. reading whatever you want to call it after the series is over. The series is over, so I can start. It's thirty hours per book, so yeah. it's going to be a, a long time. When you finish them, we'll have to talk about them on the podcast. Yes, and uh, mm. Haley's our other book expert. Exactly, bring her back for that. Um, <laughs> But yeah, I, I love this show. I remember first starting to to watch it just because, you know, I was I loved Lord of the Rings. And so yeah. uh, when they did this, I was like, okay, HBO, which is like my favorite like um, television channel or whatever production company or whatever you want to call it, is doing fantasy. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, this is going to be awesome. And I started watching. I just remember like people forget like, there wasn't that many people watching this show, yeah. season one, mm -hmm. episode one. It was like a few million people, and that was it. And yeah. it just started to grow through uh, word of mouth. Mm -hmm. People were like, oh, my God. It was you know, definitely like water cooler. It was one of the few shows that like it works week to week, and it works as a binge mm -hmm. as well. It works both ways. And so many great characters, so many... Uh, great scenes with dialogue, rich characters. And yeah, the, the ending, I would say, like the last two seasons weren't my favorite ones, but they were still pretty good and better than most television out there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Haley? Um, I'm so deeply invested in Game of Thrones. It's like hard to process that it's over. I know I've said hard to process like 17 times. I apologize. But uh it just is. It's a lot to take mm -hmm. in emotionally. I know that sounds silly, but the, no, I've doesn't. been I've been paying attention to Game of Thrones for I think like twelve years now. My mom was a big fan when I was a kid. She gave me her old hard not hard copy, her paperback, and then I just messed it up. It was, <laughs> you know, I I love this story so much, and I love something that's been really special this season. No matter how I felt about it, when I was angry, when I wasn't, it it, it did become such a juggernaut that it connected me to people from my past that I don't talk to as often anymore, mm. started wow. texting me, reaching out to me, what do you think about this episode? Mm. And I'll really miss that. I don't think we have another mm -hmm. cultural thing mm -hmm. that is goes across so many audiences to where it's like my sister, people from high school, people from college, yeah. everyone coming in and connecting. I think that's a really special thing and it, it speaks to the power of the show and the power of the storytelling in the show. Even though I felt that it went off, you know, downhill towards the end, that's a very special thing, and I will miss it. And I look forward to getting back into it if those books ever come out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Truly, um, I think it's hilarious that in our fresh emotional reactions, people are already like, "Worst show ever, worst yeah. finale ever." <laughs> they offended me personally um, because, again, whatever your opinion is, your opinion it's completely valid, but. This is going to be on top 100, top 50, top 25, top 15, top 10 best television show lists forever. 
Mm-hmm. This is a Game of Thrones is a cultural moment mm-hmm. uh, for all of its good and, and all of its ills. And for me, it never gets more ill than season four. Um, you know, and, and I love that we can all get together and speak passionately mm. and make jokes and yell at each other about it. <laughs> and we can still walk away and be friends and we can still talk about this tomorrow and we can talk about it in 10 years and in 15 years because it's ultimately so excellent. Yeah, uh, I would agree. It's it was something that when I first started watching, I enjoyed casually, and I was because mm-hmm. I hadn't read the books. I was one of those people that enjoyed it and watched it. But it was one of those shows where I could not. God, I keep messing up. Sorry, Adam. I keep I could <laughs> not uh, 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 be on my phone, mm-hmm. and that's a rare thing for me with a show yeah. where I am compelled to put the phone down and watch the show, and it made me do that. Uh, and then, as Haley said, you started to stumble into people from different walks of life who you didn't know were so into Game of Thrones as you mm-hmm. were. I, would, I was just in Houston for the Schmodown. Two of my Lyft drivers immediately, when they found out where I work at, started talking about Game of Thrones. Well, this become a, were, a cultural and a revealing question. Who's your favorite Game of Thrones character? What Game of Thrones house <laughs> right, are you Right, exactly, part of, you know? exactly. So people had opinions about the season, about the show overall, and I love that, able to talk about it. And when I started doing the recap shows uh, for Collider, that's what really got me deep into the lore. And I was watching all these videos and doing all, and learning about all these lands and their histories and going back generations and generations. It was fascinating to see how rich and beautiful this lure is and and terrible as well Mm -hmm. uh, of what people can do in certain moments of power. And then you bring in the magic and you bring in uh, the children of the forest and you bring in all that. Then you bring in the Night King and the White Walkers in the history. There's so much in the Lord of Light. There, it's such an incredible, it's an incredible tapestry of so many uh, fantastic houses and so many fantastic uh, experiences when you're reading the books, I imagine, for people who do and for watching the show as well. It gives you a taste. So I don't blame Dennis for already downloading them i should certainly get on them and start reading these books from scratch uh and seeing if i get even more of an enjoyment out of this and my perspective on the show may probably change Mm -hmm. uh as i read the books and kind of go backwards into the situation but who knows but either way it certainly compels me to do that and not a lot of shows uh will do that for me so and it's been a fun fun topic of conversation with so many <laughs> friends about their feelings on the show. I've had four separate text message threads going on since the show ended tonight. So it's like <laughs> all kinds of stuff going on there. All right. I think that's everything for tonight. Does anyone else want to say one one last thing? Are we good? All right. Well, uh, well thank you. Oh, yeah, no, does. just we'll, we'll be talking more about sure. this show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the finale yeah. on Collider here. We have our What the Throne podcast. Mm-hmm. And then I'm sure there's a lot of things that we'll be discussing. Yeah, further. definitely. Definitely. It's not going away. I'm sure there'll be a video in my future that I have to write real quick in the yes. morning and, and do <laughs> yeah. a voiceover. On. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us uh, this season and past seasons for Thrones Talk. Uh, this is the last one reviewing, obviously, an episode of the show live. So. So, but there will be, as Dennis said, more Game of Thrones content coming from Collider as it goes along, uh, and maybe some revisiting of uh, seasons or episodes or characters and what have you on the What the Throne podcast, and maybe some special stuff we shoot here. Um, but let's go around the table, tell everybody we can find you. Dennis, please. Uh, you guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero, Instagram, Dennis.TZNG, and like we talked about, the What the Throne podcast that uh, me and Ashley are doing tomorrow. Yay. Boom. Uh, Haley? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Haley Fouch. You can find me on Instagram at Haystack McGroovy. And you should definitely check out Collider.com tomorrow and tonight. There's going to be a whole bunch of content. <laughs> Game of Thrones is not over yet. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Robinson. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Ashley V. Robinson. The V is very important. Uh, please come to Twitter and share me uh, pictures of Theon Greyjoy. I'm sad that he's dead. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, all right, y'all can follow me at the Roka says on Twitter and on Instagram. And I want to thank all three of these people for being on the panel this season. It's been a blast talking Game of Thrones with you all. Thanks for uh, hosting and making notes and doing all of the legwork. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do the best I can. I do the best I can. Uh, you three are the uh, massive experts on it, so it's fun for me to ride along with the three of you as we talk about the show and get to throw my two cents in passionately or otherwise every once in a while. <laughs> and uh, shout out to Kyle as well, who subbed in for a couple episodes as well. It was nice to have Kyle on. Yeah. On the show nice uh, uh, thoughts on his perspective uh, all right well thanks everybody for watching tonight really appreciate all the comments lively uh, as they were tonight uh, it's been a blast hosting the show and uh, it's been my honor and uh, it looks like uh, our watch has ended have yourselves a great night and I look forward to your comments on Twitter about this episode thanks to Adam Smith we'll talk to you soon take care everybody <laughs>